Hey guys, it's Tiff, and today I'm cutting up this box, this cardboard box, and I'm going to just make a really quick stencil to use on my jelly plate. Um, the stencils and mask. I often find that I really like just the like organic look um, of just using handmade stencils. So if you're in a situation where maybe you don't have a lot of stencils or you're new to art journaling or playing with your jelly plate, um, grab yourself a cardboard box and just kind of uh, make yourself some rough um, stencils. So they actually hold up relatively well and I had some that I have like used to death and of course you will have to throw them away eventually but you can still recycle these and use them um, for a, a long time. I've probably had some of mine for years um, and I am not a... I, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do not wash my stencils. I'm just throwing it out there. I ain't going to do it. There is too much time in this world to do other things. And I ain't got time to be cleaning those stencils. So, um, those of you who freak out when you see like dirty stencils, first of all, um, I don't know how you made it here. Second of all, this is probably not for you. Just going to go ahead and throw that out there. I'm just taking scissors here and cutting just rough shapes. I am going to be using the Jelly Arts Gel Printing Plate. If you do not have a jelly plate, there are lots of YouTube videos out there on how to make a handmade um, gel print printing plate for mono prints. Um, try it out. I did that before I wanted to invest into an actual um, jelly plate myself. I really love, and I go through these moods where I'll make just a lot of prints, just spend kind of a day in the studio um, making print after print after print, and then I may go and I may not do it for a few months, and then I go back and I'm like, hey, I want to make um, some more jelly prints. So I had used a lot of my jelly prints like I'm down to the bare bones of what I had um and I here I kind of cut and then I realized that probably wasn't the smartest for a stencil so I'm just gonna use my masking tape and I'm just gonna seal it up and it's gonna be fine so if you make a mistake and you're like oh that probably shouldn't have been cut for the best um stencil use then hey tape that baby up and let it roll so like I was saying go ahead and make yourself one of the ones that uh will keep for a while I think I had to keep it in the refrigerator or something they probably have changed the formula because this was ages ago but um these uh you can now find these or another brand similar to it like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that but like I was saying, I kind of go on these just like tears where I do lots and lots of prints all at one time. And then I go and I use those as either collage material or to make uh, journals with. They're great like starters just to put into a handmade journal. I have gone through the majority of the ones that I had so I knew I might as well just turn on the camera and let you guys go along for the ride. What you will need is a gel or a mono printing plate. I have seen some people have done like a plastic bag and gotten similar results. Um, you will also need a brayer. Um, I am going to use a paintbrush and you are going to need some acrylic paints. Now, what I notice is some of the cheaper acrylic paints that are a little, a little more fluid actually work better for making prints. And the thing with um, the jelly plate is a little goes a long way. So, I wanted to put a pop of that neon that I had out on uh, my desk. That's neon red. I've actually been using that more and more because I'm coming, I'm going to get rid of the fear of red. So, there it is. I'm putting it out there on YouTube. That means that you guys can hold me accountable. But, um, what, I lost my train of thought. That happens all the time. Hmm. 
I don't know what I was going to say. But I just like to make a lot of prints. You can use those uh, leaf or whatever type of uh, things those are right there as mask. So I'm going to go down with the scallops. I've used the brayer to get it thin. Oh, I know what I was going to say is a little bit of paint goes a really long way when it comes to jelly printing. Now, I did have my fan going. I have a little bitty fan that I sit on my um, desk because I have a big window and sometimes it gets a little warm in there. So I realized through this because I live <clears throat> in a humid area but that fan blowing uh just kind of was making this uh paint dry even faster you typically on the gel plate have a little wiggle room for you to be able to uh kind of maneuver the paints but it was drying pretty good so i went ahead and a little bit later i'm going to turn that fan off just to make sure um that it's good to go the cool thing about jelly place is you can literally paint on anything like i have done fabric i have done old scrapbook paper that i've had for years and years and years i have done uh vintage paper i have done all kinds of paper just grab it i've done it with uh the actual cardboard boxes before um just to get like a background going i really like that craft paper this is under paper which is newsprint that i use um to go directly down and it's thin and it makes really good collage material but oftentimes i work in one like general area of my um desk and then i rotate it and try to get you know under paper marks on the other side and sometimes I just come up short and I still uh, want to change my paper because maybe I'm filming a class or something but uh, I don't want to throw that newspaper newsprint away because we recycle everything around this place <laughs> and so I will take and cut those big sheets of newsprint up and use um, that to do prints on and then the craft paper and then of course the deli paper if you're not familiar with deli paper it's super thin paper that is deli paper so it's like stuff that the deli uses it doesn't have wax on it um, and so it makes really good collage material where it kind of just melts into the page. And here I decided not to do the brayer so much, but go in with the paintbrush just to give it a little bit of, of a different look. Um, and I may actually circle back with brayer. I can't remember. What I, oh, I'm going in here with a, this is a barbecue skewer. <laughs> so, uh, I like to use it a lot. It's uh, like a shish kebab, shish kebab, I like that word. It's a shish kebab skewer. And I, I think the tip was at some point like a pointed tip. I only have one left. Um, but now it's, I think I probably broke it maybe. And I just use it just you can use anything i've used toilet paper uh rolls and just like made circles with that i actually have a really 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 old video of uh, me doing um household supplies to use for um print making i don't even know if i could probably even link that thing or not i would have to go into the archives I think I at last count I have over 250 videos, maybe 300 these days. So it's way back there when I first started figuring out how cool jelly prints are. Now what I will say is some people use the print as the art itself. So they think through like the composition and stuff like that. Well, y'all probably already know that is not my way of life. So I make the prints and use the prints how I want to use the prints, wherever that may be. And here I'm going in here with a little bit of Payne's Gray. So the prints that you see today will not look like the prints whenever I have them um, either 
layers on top of them it's just kind of like a jumping off point or maybe you know I like one little area of the print and I will just collage that area and just tear it apart so there are people out there who think far enough ahead that they actually use this as the completed project that is not how TIFF rolls so I just um, kind of explore and create um, backgrounds and things to kind of have as a springboard so i'm gonna do it i'm i'm done yapping with y'all today so i hope y'all are having an amazing monday today's video is in memory of two beautiful artists that have impacted me and really uh kind of uh always encouraged me they were some of my original viewers one of them passed away this weekend miss judy parker and the other one miss carolyn um she actually passed away several years ago they've been on my mind uh this weekend i guess since miss judy died but um they watch my videos from the very beginning so today's video is in memory of those two beautiful ladies and so i hope that you take the opportunity to not overthink but just let go embrace the mess and have fun getting all of your messy jelly prints going on so i'm gonna put you guys on to music and i'll catch you next time toodaloo
I will pipe in real quick and tell you guys that this is where um, I got really curious and got my lighter and graphite water soluble um, crayon out and just like really a messy face here with and I got the lighter graphite wet um, and went in directly it actually was really cool um, and I think that's pretty neat and then I'm just going to use that um, with a little water on it to make some marks I had never tried the Lyra Graphite Water Soluble Crayon before, but um, it, it turned out pretty cool. So explore with some mediums that you may not necessarily think of as something to use on the jelly plate and just see how they turn out. Okay guys, so that was a blast. I hope you enjoyed getting messy with me in the studio today and just going through and exploring the jelly plate. Um, it's a great way to just kind of de-stress and not worry about what may or may not happen. So I hope that you will click that subscribe button. Make sure to leave me a comment and until next time.
Toodaloo!